Hey there, this is Dan Bell from Intigent, and uh, we're going to talk about adding users to Project Online. And if you recall previously, there are the two different permission modes, SharePoint and Project. And of course, there's going to be different ways to add users if you're using those different permission modes, and we're going to cover those for you. So first, let's look at SharePoint permission mode, adding users in that mode. I am logged into my Project Web App environment, and I click on the gear in the top right, and I select Site Settings. Upon selecting on the site settings in the users and permissions section, there is a site permission link. I click on that. Once I click on that, there are a number of things that I can do here. So there, there's two ways that I can add users from here. Um, the first way is to actually click on the group that I want to add them to. And you'll see there's, uh, we're going to focus on project managers for Project Web App. Um, basically, you're, you're going to want to look at the ones that have Project Web App after them. These are the groups that are created by default that will allow capabilities and functionality based on role within Project Online. Click on Project Managers in here. And uh, you can see there's a couple in here that we already added from previously, Barbara Liner and Carly Axelrod. They were added via um, myself adding them moments ago. So if I wanted to click, uh, click and add somebody else in here, right, I can go ahead and select this. And uh, if I know the name of the person in here, I can go ahead and select and add their name like that. If I want to add a group, I can click on a group such as that, click share, and then that information is going to be added in there, right? So if I select the group, those users within that group will be added. If I do it individually, just that user will be added, okay? All right, let's try that again and show you a little different way. Go back to site settings and site permissions once again. This time I'm going to click on grant permissions, and when I click on grant permissions, it goes straight to the dialog. The first thing I usually do when I select grant permissions is I'll click on show options and that's because I want to select the permission level because remember I didn't click on the group. I clicked on grant permissions and in here I need to specify well what permissions and I'm going to select project manager. Do I want to send an email here? Mm, you know I may, may or not. And again type the name of the user. We'll type in David's name there. Click share. And now we've gone ahead and added David in there. And again, we've done it that different way, right? That second method. If I want to confirm David's in there, I can click directly on Project Managers for Project Web App. And we can see there is David within the Project Manager group, right? Okay, so far so good. Now, what this does is this is adding people who can access Project Online, right? Project Web App. What happens if I want to actually have resources in the resource center to be able to assign to tasks in projects and determine their capacity utilization, forecast demand, and so forth? Well, they need to be added to the enterprise resource pool, right? The easiest way to do that, if they happen to be resources that are set up in the system, right, as users, is to synchronize with an existing group. And you can see Active Directory Enterprise Resource Pool Synchronization. So I can do it this way. I can specify a resource in here and I have resources group created in here and then when I have that specified and selected I can click save and synchronize now and what that's going to do is save and synchronize the resources that are currently in that resource pool and there are all those resources that now these can currently be selected and assigned to work in my various projects right so if I'm going to build a team uh, build a project and a project and I want to add these resources, um, I can go ahead and add those resources to the project, right? So let's go ahead and launch project and connect to this environment and show that those resources show up. Now I'm copying the URL because I need to create a connection to this environment. We'll select and click on project. I'm going to click on computer and click on blank here because I'm creating a new connection. Now if you need to see this done in a little bit slower mode, uh, I'd be happy to let you see that because I do have a video that focuses on that and we'll try to set that up that link so you can see it in a subsequent video right okay we'll go back in project and we'll select project request again and this time it should log us directly in there and it just takes a moment there's a little bit of a delay it's connecting to the cloud environment so if I select blank project and now if I were to select control T which brings up build team from enterprise oh look at that there are those resources that right we talked about them we just added them via the sync they can be added to the system okay let us say for a moment there are other resources that we want to add they're not users in the system they can't log in but we want to be able to, to assign them to tasks anyway 
to be able to forecast work. Yeah, we're not going to log in. Maybe at some point in time they will. We can associate a user account with them at that time. All right, what I'm going to do is go here and maybe I'll just open a couple of those resources, right? Yeah, we're going to let project open that. That's that's OK. And again, it's asking me to confirm. All right, so it opened those two resources. So why did I open those two resources? I really opened those that, that just so it would get that enterprise resource pool open for me. And what I have is the names of a whole bunch more resources that are not going to actually be users in the system, but still they're named resources. And I want to be able to assign them to work and project. There's their rates. I just pasted the rates in and you can see them all there, right? All work resources. And what I want to do is save this. And it's my checked out resource pool currently. And once I finish saving this, I'm going to close the enterprise resource pool and you'll see that. Yeah, we're going to save it and it's going to check that back in. We'll go back to just the project at this point. And what I'm going to do is deselect those two resources and click on resources again. And you should see many more resources show up here now. Both those actual resources that have accounts, right? See them there. And then you'll have all those other resources as well, right? Who don't have accounts that I just added to the system, okay? Now we have a, a full pool of resources that I can go ahead and start assigning to my projects. Some are actual resources that are going to log in and perhaps enter time against timesheets. Other resources are just there for, merely for me, the purposes to be able to, you know, kind of forecast their work. And uh, maybe I'll enter their time and you know, some other mechanism within the system. But I just want to be able to add them in there. Again, this is my blank project. I could open this up. And I did a build team from Enterprise here. It's taking just a moment to open up. Um, I can have all these resources in here. There's an accountant. I can use that as a generic, right? You have the architect as well. And then I have some real resources in here too. Once you select them, they'll show up in the resource name column and you're able to assign them to tasks within the projects, right? Excellent. All right, so far so good. So that's the process by which we're gonna add resources in SharePoint permission mode. Next, we're gonna focus on adding resources in project permission mode. Now, if you recall, we talked about permissions modes in an earlier video, the previous video segment, right? So the big difference, uh, again, clicking on server settings or going to the gear and clicking on PWA settings, same end result. You're going to have that security grouping section in this area right here in server settings where you're not going to have a SharePoint permission mode, right? When we're in this mode, I click on manage users brings me to the following screen. And in here, I can go ahead and click on new user. And this will allow me to add a single user, right? What I can do is I can come here to user logon account. And as you saw me before, I can start typing in a username. Remember Barbara from previously. There's Barbara. Once I type in her name, her email address shows up, her display name shows up. And this is all from Active Directory. Click Save. And then we'll go ahead and see once we click Save that she shows up here, right? As a user that can now be added to the system, okay? So uh, very helpful in here where you can go ahead and, and add people to the system this way, right? Uh, but you know, there's there's actually a way within Project Permission Mode where you can specify Active Directory Sync. Now Active Directory Sync in Project Permission Mode is really a two-step process, right? There's the Enterprise Resource Pool Synchronization and what this does is add resources to the Enterprise Resource Pool so they may be added to project teams and assigned to tasks. That's why this is a two-step process, because once you run the resource pool sync, we follow it up by the group sync, and therefore, if those resources that were added to the pool need to be moved from another group, the group synchronization will take care of that. And what I'm going to do is click on Active Directory Resource Pool Synchronization, and currently you can see there's a section for Active Directory Group. What I'm going to do is find a group called Resources, select that, and what this is going to do is this is going to synchronize the resources in that group. And that's going to be all the resources that I want to be able to assign to tasks and projects. And I'm going to click Save and Sync now. And right now the synchronization is taking place. If I go back in there, we'll note that it was synchronized successfully at this day and time. Today's the 25th. Click Cancel. All right. So now if I go to my resources, I can see I have a handful of resources here, all added to the system, right? All right, so let's go take a look at Daniel Shackelford. We'll click on Dan. And look, no group assignment. Exactly what we said, right? That means you have to follow this up by the group sync. 
I'm going to click on server settings, manage groups, because that group synchronization is what is going to take care of moving these resources to the correct groups that they belong to. I have a couple groups set up, one for team members, one for project managers. We're going to specify those now. We clicked on the team member group. What I want to do is the AD group name, specify the team members group, click save. And once that saves, we're going to click on the project manager group. And then we'll go ahead and specify that. And there's project managers. We'll click save. And then once that is done, you can see now we have those groups specified. If we click on active directory group sync options, what I can do is I collect save and synchronize now. And obviously you've, you've probably noticed you can um, specify some other settings. You can also specify a regular time synchronization with this. For now, I'm just going to click save and synchronize now. And there is a column here, last sync, right? If I'm going to go ahead and go to server settings then go back to manage groups, you'll see it both succeeded here, right? Okay. Member, Mr. Shackleford is in here. We'll click on him. And if I scroll down, now you can see he's part of the project managers group, right? And let's see, I think Molly Clark was a team member. We'll take a look at Molly. Molly's a team member, right? Obviously, the other way you can look at this, right, is to go to service settings, manage groups, go into team members, and then here are all the users that were added as team members in here, the selected users, right? And if I go back to project managers, I will be able to see these are the folks added as project managers in my system as well, right? So a number of users were added, okay? So if I go back to Resource Center here, again, I'll see a number of resources added here, right? Excellent. So far, so good. Let's go ahead and open just one of these resources. We'll open Barbara we'll click open. Uh, we're going to click that checkbox so we don't get reminded of that over and over again. Click yes. And what I'm doing is opening the resource pool in Microsoft Project. Now doing that in the Microsoft Project is great because it allows you to make changes to multiple resources. It's a little bit quicker, right? So I don't have to edit resources one at a time. In Project Web App, I can open up one or I can open up all resources right here in Microsoft Project. Um, you know, there can be a scenario where I want to add a number of resources in here. Okay, so, but first let's do this. Let's say I want to add a couple of generic resources because what we're going to do is we're going to have generics as placeholders okay, at some point in time. And what I can do is I can put the generic column in here and I can say these are generics. Yes, yes, yes. I also have some named resources that I want to add to the system. And we'll just add some of them over here. I'm going to paste these in here. Okay, we have some there. And I think I have some rates as well because we do want to calculate costs. Oop, didn't want it there. I wanted it in there. All right, so I have resources in there. Right, so I have all those resources saved. Click save. And again, you can see it says checked out enterprise resources. That means I have the resource pool open. I'm going to select file close. Save my changes. Yes. Now we go back to here we'll click on resource center to refresh you're going to see more resources show up here okay so there they are right and again you can see the ones with actual counts as such you can see the others right adele you can see the generic resource of accountant okay architect and so forth that's that's basically you know adding resources multiple ways right one at a time using ad sync opening the resource pool in microsoft project and then pasting the names in and then save and close the resource pool. Now, if I were to open up a blank project at this point in time, or if I were to select file new and maybe use one of these handy templates here, all right, we'll just go ahead and click uh, save create here. All I'm pointing out here is that if I were to click control T now, like we said before that resource pool sync, its main job is to make sure that these resources that are being added show up here to be added to the team, right, of my project as such so that they can be assigned to tasks here. So at this point I can replace my analysts, right? With Craig Bell, I can replace the deployment team with David So. Okay, project manager, Mr. Shackleford, if you recall, he's project manager, technical communicators, testers. Okay, 
So obviously you can go through this and make your changes. Okay, and we'll just place management with Megan. And uh, there we go, click okay. All right, and if I were to go to view, click on that, show all subtasks. Now you can see I replaced all those generics that were on this project with the resources that are part of my project team. Okay, another thing we'll want to do in this project, of course, oh, and it looks like it already did that for me. It selected today as the start date of the project. Well, it's not going to start on Saturday, of course. We'll select the sixth here. It's going to change the date. And uh, well, there you go, folks. Hopefully, we learned a little something about adding users, uh, users in either SharePoint permission mode or project permission mode. We showed adding a single user using groups. We showed using Active Directory Sync. We showed adding. Uh, manually adding users using the Open Enterprise Resource Pool. Really hope you learned something from this. Any questions or comments, feel free to leave us a note. Happy to hear from you. Look for a subsequent video in this Getting Started with MS Project Online series very soon. Thanks so much for watching and hope you have a great day.